This episode is brought to you by PopCultureZone.com. For all your cleaning and pressing needs and as low as $5.99 a book, be sure to check them out. With over 8,000 books cleaned and pressed, PopCultureZone.com. What is going on, guys? It's Brian and Jack with Superman's Comics. New week. So, of course, we got that three up three down for you that's right we're talking about the hot market trends and the cold market trends and we're hitting you with three of each starting with the first one this week and we're going in three up we're talking about no yeah certainly a character we've talked about on some moments comics youtube channel on several programs but we've talked about him specifically on this portion of the show um really when you're talking about a character that has been consistent and has consistently been talked about in demand. I can't think of too many characters other than like Spider Gwen, Miles Morales, and maybe Gore the God Butcher, who have really had a dominant last year for their first appearances. And maybe Punchline is starting to sneak into some of that conversation, but we'll see. Um, and no, his, his star is only rising. So we've had record prices paid. We had that uh, Venom number three third print that features Null on the cover. Uh, a 9 8 sell for $1,000? this week um we also saw uh the announcement of the next major crossover series the king in black which i gotta tell you brian i'm really excited about absolute carnage was a home run for me but bringing null to or something that we've been building towards since the beginning of Donny cage venom run and then on top of it kind of putting him in his place where he is this all encompassing villain of the thanos or galactus level where it's going to take the entire Avengers to fight him and you know you still don't know if they're they're going to be enough so I'm excited for that and for all of those reasons we're seeing Null get more attention the thing I would be on the lookout for Brian is some of those later printings that have been often ignored maybe some of the higher printing ones the you know some of the ones where they kind of redid the cover art like that sketch I think it's fourth print or the previews exclusive some of books like that that have been kind of slept on because I really think similar to Spider Gwen, similar to Miles Morales, we're going to get to a point where everything though is going to be untouchable. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, and it seems like whenever you hear people stop talking about no, some other news comes out and it's right yes. back up there. And for good reason, I definitely look forward to that next event. We've talked about how neither of us are really on that empire train, but I'll hurry up and read it if it'll get us through to December to that next event. But the next one we want to talk about on 3UP, you often hear like, oh, the bubble's coming, the bubble's going to burst, the comic market's tanking. Well, right now it seems that isn't the case, that we have industry-wide sales that are up there more than what we've seen before, right? Right. 2019 sales reports are hitting. I, I could quote you an article, but there are several that have come out in the last 24 hours from every major um, follower of comics, um, the comics industry. We're talking about $1.9 billion industry that comics represented. And the comics industry is, is only continuing to grow. And a lot of creators pointed to that over the last 24 hours, shared that on Twitter, those articles, um, because creators are starting to see money that they haven't seen in a long time. Um, the, the industry is starting to hit points where there's so many avenues from creator-owned comics. Uh, artists are having the ability to sell their own products, do retailer exclusives, as well as publisher-produced comics. Um, web comics are continuing to explode as more and more people are releasing digital comics as a, a another means and tool and avenue to get your work out there, as well as the Kickstarter, Indiegogo, and GoFundMe route, which has continued to kind of build and become a new strategy and a new release form for comics. And the other thing, Brian, that you and I have talked about, but these kids, the kids who are reading these graphic novels, what, and especially the ones that seem not to be a part of the comics industry, but absolutely are. And I'm talking about like those uh, trade paperback graphic novels uh, of Dogman and, and Captain Underpants and uh, Smile and Sisters and, and uh, The Adventure Time and all the other great products that like Kaboom puts out from Boom Studios. Um, all of these are, are really in demand as more and more kids are encouraged through the Scholastic Reading Program to read in school, uh, read graphic novels in school, as well as read them on their own time. And I just think that the, the industry, we focus so much on the kind of micro of what we can see. People complain about different avenues and different aspects, and they kind of imagine this spec bubble happening because of what we saw in the past. But a lot of the spec back in the early 90s was based on 
projection that had never happened before. So they people imagined that the death of Superman was going to be this huge thing. But we know now death issues aren't these huge things. We know now event issues aren't these huge things. We know all of these things because of the experiences we've gone through. And, and, the, and these kind of events are less likely to happen. So you and I have long been positive proponents of the long-term health of the comics industry. We see it in our, our four combined children um, on a regular basis. But I'm glad to see that more and more people are now publicly getting to see what we've seen, which is that the industry is, a, the industry is at an all-time high, and it's going to continue to grow because this isn't the first time we've seen this. They've set record years, like three, four years in a row. Yeah, I think it also doubles down where a lot of people are like, oh, everything is going to go digital only. That's not the case. We're seeing that press and paper goods are still in high demand, especially in the comic industry. We've also seen that just this week in Marvel where we were talking about what was cold is some of those Marvel digital only titles are no longer going digital. They're going back into press. Yeah, and I think things like that Ravencroft book, I have to believe Marvel sat back and saw the ra- ruins of Ravencroft number one take off as people got excited for uh, Cletus Kasdan's father and or the older ancestor. And then um, suddenly now that they're bringing that series back uh, to, to, you know, comic form. So I think we're going to continue to see more and more of that. Uh, yeah, we're long proponents of the collecting market demands the book to be in print. Yeah. And with the last one on the three up portion, we're going to talk a little bit about Grifter. Now, why is this one hot right now? Well, solicitations for Batman 101 show Grifter as the cover of the Jimenez uh, design variant. And we've seen all of these new characters show up, as well as these kind of redesigns like Joker and Catwoman that kind of give you the fresh perspective that this James Tynan run is bringing to, uh, you know, bat- this current Batman run. Uh, and Grifter is a character coming from Image Comics and the, and the Wildcats uh, from the Wildstorm universe. And of course, the, the mastermind, Jim Lee, um, was part of the purchase that brought in Wildstorm and Jim Lee into DC Comics. These characters really haven't been used. Now, we've seen some talk recently that Superman could be joining the Authority and maybe coming into the Authority book. Uh, certainly now with the talk that we're going to see Grifter in Gotham City for this Batman run for issue 101, which was originally planned to be a rebooted number one and is now a 101. So I believe very much like the Ninja Turtles that 101 is an issue to be on the lookout for because I think that it's really going to kick off some all new things for the whole Bat family and everything going on with James Tynan and, and uh, DC Comics. But we've seen the effect on the secondary market Right, Grifter's first appearance, Wildcats number one, has started to sell. Now, here's the important thing is, is the Boo Birds will get at me and say, oh, it's 3 to $5 sale, you know, plus shipping, it ain't nothing, blah, 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 it's 2 million copies. I know all that. But you got to put it into pro- proper perspective. This was a book you couldn't even sell for a dollar on the internet just a week ago. And now the fact that Grifter is going to be in Gotham City, and Grifter's a very cool character. Grifter's a character that has absolute potential to take off the way that uh, Jason Todd, that, and I don't care how many this book is printed. I actually still think Wildcats number one, because of Grifter alone, has the ability to be a book that's a $10, $15, $20 book. Um, and, and it just, it's going to depend on how Grifter is in kind of brought into Batman. But either way, uh, it's something to pay attention to. It's something to note. And it's certainly on the upswing right now, albeit it may not have hit its peak kind of heat level. There's still some room. Uh, for buying opportunity if you really are that bullish on James Tynan and what he's doing with this story. Yeah, I'm definitely enjoying that run right now. But that's our three-up portion. We're going to just transition right now into the three down. And the first one we want to talk about is Captain Marvel. I think this is one of the ones that could present buying opportunity. Huge buying opportunity. I think the, the, the reason why we're talking about this on the three down is, again, you guys have demanded. You want buying opportunity, right? I can't think of better buying opportunity if you were to say to me, and I get asked this question. I know you get asked this question too, Brian. What's the one book I I should buy right now? Well, my answer isn't necessarily the answer that's the sexiest or that everybody wants to hear because people, some people feel some sort of way about Brie Larson. Some people feel some sort of way about the Captain Marvel movie, but Avenging Spider-Man number nine is by far, in my opinion, the best investment in all of modern comics right now. 
It is currently selling for between sixty and seventy dollars on eBay on a regular basis. This is a book that was selling for four to six hundred dollars at the height of the Captain Marvel number one craze. I've heard people say that Captain Marvel is going to get killed off. I don't believe that. They've already got Captain Marvel two scheduled. I don't believe they're going to just transition into Monica Rambeau. I don't believe Monica Rambeau will actually be Captain Marvel. I believe that she will be one of her other aliases. So I think that people's personal feelings about Brie Larson aside, the movie was successful. Brie Larson is considered a major actress. She is well thought of in Hollywood circles. Um, I don't think she's going anywhere. And I think that we're going to continue to see Captain Marvel movies. Furthermore, Captain Marvel connected with a female audience that previous Marvel movies had not connected with. And that certainly played out within the merchandise and the hype over the books. And I just think that the, 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 all the things that you could say negative about Captain Marvel or Brie Larson that we get in the comment section, seemingly every time we talk about Captain Marvel, somebody starts bringing up Brie Larson. When people were paying four to $600 for this book, Brie Larson was still Captain Marvel. She was still the same person. And she was still the same views and opinions and things that people may not like. Um, so I, I look at that and I dismiss that kind of altogether. I don't think it really has plays out it, and uh, I think if you can kind of separate the politics from comics, you can realize that this is really a great investment. Um, I also would look at that second print sketch cover, which is a really tough find. It's a ghost and it's a real hard find um, in great condition. But the, the, it, this has impacted Captain Marvel on every level. And I really think it's, a, it's largely a spec cycle thing. Um, but her current run had a lot of heat with Star. We've seen that die off. Um, and I, I still I, like the 2011 Kelly Sue DeConnick run. It's amazing. It's really amazing. Everything that Kelly Sue did from Avenging Nine on, from the implementation of this character, was has really been great. Um, and there would be no Captain Marvel movie uh, if it wasn't for King. In a way, Kelly Sue DeConnick is very much the Stan Lee of this character. So, um, yeah, I agree with you. And I still think that, that that Captain Marvel number one from that run is still a, a very uh, viable comic to look at long term. Yeah, I mean, that, I enjoyed that run. I was actually reading that run, the newer run we've talked about here before where I wasn't on board as much, but gone back and picked up the trades. And I enjoyed the story. Yes. But the next one we're talking about kind of ties into Captain yeah. Marvel, but we're talking about just the MCU in general right now is kind of on a downward trend. Specifically, the properties that we've seen talked about for Disney Plus, as well as future MCU movies, I almost wanted to list certain properties individually. Ones that I would talk about might be Blade, Moon Knight, but I felt like we would get kind of backlash as people would still point to these high prices that these books are going for, and the fact that they haven't dropped necessarily substantially. But when these prices drop, there's always one area where you see the largest drop, and that tends to be mid to low grade copies. So mid to low grade copies of, say, the first Moon Knight have suddenly gotten into the 200s, which makes it a lot more affordable, especially when the minimum you could touch a copy for a good four or five months ago was, I don't know, like 500 bucks, 600 bucks. So the fact that we have hit those sort of levels, and here's the other buying opportunities, Brian, those secondary books. So forget about the first appearances. Those are classic keys. But that Blade number one that everybody was all excited about that hit everybody's top 10, that's back down below 10 bucks. Um, you know, uh, Moon Knight number one from 1980, which is the first appearance of Bushman, who's supposed to be the villain. That book has dropped a bit. Moon Knight 25, which is another key first appearance. That book has dropped a bit. The Moon Knight variants that were seemingly breaking records, which each release have gotten stagnant. And and that goes, we've seen that we've seen the same with she hulk we've seen the same with miss marvel we've seen the same with rumored characters like nova and things like that where prices have really stabilized and it's really just a spec cycle because all of hollywood is on standstill we do not know when we are going to get this back going it seems like the direct to digital option is just not going to happen so we're not going to get uh black widow we're not going to get new mutants we're not going to get it eternals that way so we're going to just have to wait this out, and it may be a while, And but this has created an exceptional buying opportunity across the board. So I would right now, 
suggest that any of you who are looking for investment opportunities, kind of go through your, your hit list of books that you were looking for that you felt like had priced out. Recheck those prices because a lot of those prices have now come down and have become kind of available on the whole. And that's the beauty of 3 Up 3 Down is we're not always pointing to individual books. We're showing you a trend at a macro level, which then you can kind of apply however your investment strategy or as Brian likes to say, you can just buy what you like. Yeah, definitely buy what you like. And you spin to the spec cycle, which we also know ties into the news cycle. We haven't had much news lately. Yeah. Production started, production stopped. Production's picking back up again. D23 was canceled, which you mentioned that Disney Plus, that was where a lot of news came out from last week. But just within this upcoming week or so, we get that virtual San Diego Comic-Con. Some news is probably going to come out of there, which is going to kick some of these titles back up into high speed again. For sure. But the last one we'll talk about on three down this week is Harley Quinn. Yes, we know there's a lot of Harley Quinn number 75s out there coming up. But in general, I think that attention has been focused on those newer tie-in characters. I still love Harley Quinn. I still love that Batman Adventures number 12. But it, we got to admit, you're not hearing that name ring out like it used to. Well, yeah, there is an overexposure with Harley Quinn. It's very much, um, to use a pro wrestling analogy, which if you've ever watched us before, we love to use pro wrestling analogies on the channel. She's an overexposed champion. She's certainly a world champion, right? She's held that title. She has dominated the comic secondary market for periods of time. But she's gotten to a point where I think everybody who kind of wanted this book or that book has, has acquired that. And then you and I have talked about our disinterest in her current comic run and the last couple comic runs and sort of the irreverence of them. And they haven't kind of really developed the character. And we actually enjoyed some of the offshoot non-canon stories yeah, like Black Label. Har yeah, the, the Joker Criminal Insanity, uh, the Harleen. These have been more excited, exciting um, and, and realistic and true to what we feel like the original character was intended to be, um, depiction of Harley Quinn. Beyond that, you talked about all those 75, issue 75 variants, and certainly that's a big issue, but it's also a big issue because it's her last issue. And there no, hasn't been a talk yet of a new number one. Um, there's been a lot of talk of DC kind of supplementing her with Punchline. That Punchline could be everything that she is, but correct some of maybe the mistakes that they have. Now, I hear a lot of people talking about that, but just like with Captain Marvel, I always say follow the money. They're not going to abandon Harley Quinn, a character who has made them too much money. Do I think they need to revamp the character? Yes. Do I think Punchline provides them opportunity to do that? Absolutely. I think her battles with Punchline can then could give her a natural arch enemy. They can give her a natural reason to take something serious and to have a story with some danger and some elements of possible loss um and i hope that they root harley quinn and they bring in a new creative team i have a lot of respect for jimmy palmiati and amanda amanda connor i think they have put their heart and soul and so much work into this character but i think that just again like anything else it's gotten stale you've seen it over and over again i think we need some new blood some fresh life put into this character into the series and uh i just think that between birds of prey between uh, the Suicide Squad movie um, between the, the unfortunate DC ad not really being able to support an excellent Harley Quinn animated series and the publishing woes that, that, that the series has had. Um, the character's really taken a lot of losses in a row, Brian. Really, it's been a long time since she was holding that championship. And instead now looks like that uh, kind of mid-card jobber who used to be champion and uh, we got to try to get her back to where she was and the best way to do that may be the kind of for her to be on this portion of the list but if for whatever reason you're like that harley quinn diehard who maybe those books priced out and now's the time to really check and pay attention because the first appearance is specifically in raw condition has been um kind of dropping and more affordable a lot of these variants that years ago were these high high dollar variants are now extremely affordable so it's a great time if you're a harley quinn collector and you felt maybe overwhelmed for the last few years with the just influx of product that they've put out and the amount of covers and so on and so forth now is a great opportunity for you to play some catch up yeah, I mean, even if you don't like the books, like you said, there's some great Harley Quinn covers out there. Some Adam Hughes covers, which brings me also to Harley Quinn number 75. Our channel sponsor, Frankie's Comics, is going to have a kick-ass Adam Hughes exclusive variant, so be on the lookout for that. But also, 
we just within the past week listed our very first Simple Mints Comics 616 Comics exclusive brand also, right? That's right, on SimpleMintsComics.com, as well as the 616Comics.com, we have for sale Seven Secrets Number 1 from Boom Studios, the brand new debut into creator-owned comics from Tom Taylor. We just talked about Suicide Squad. Tom Taylor's writer of Suicide Squad, but he's also the creator of Deceased, as well as the creator of X-23 uh, as Wolverine, the all-new Wolverine from Marvel Comics. So this guy has had his hand in iconic comics, and now he's bringing that to Boom Studios. And we just had to jump in and get involved. 500 copy print run, limited virgin cover by one of our favorite cover artists who we don't think gets enough attention and I think will, Jung Young Yoon, uh, who brought the real cover art heat for this one. And we're excited about this. Again, it's available right now for pre-order on simplemanscomics.com as well as the 616comics.com. And that's our three up and three down for this week. Let us know in the comments what do you guys think about the list. What comics do you think are up right now? What comics do you think are down right now? What do you think is great buying opportunities? Put those in the comments. We'll be sure to feature those on the next three up, three down. This has been Brian and Jack with Submits Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.